Hide Hide your kids. kids. Lock the doors. You're listening to HR's most dangerous Dangerous podcast. podcast. Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right Right where it hurts. Complete with breaking news, rash opinion, and loads of snark. Buckle up, boys and girls. It's time for the Chad and Cheese Podcast. What's up, everybody? This is the Chad and Cheese Podcast. We are live from the Daxter booth Ah. at Unleash in Las Vegas. I'm your co-host, Joel Cheeseman. Joined, as always, Chad Sowash is here. And we are excited to welcome Sugu Dina Karen to the show. He is the VP of Product at Work Llama. Sugu, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Did I pronounce your name correctly? I did, money. Awesome. To 10 awesome. Attempts. Awesome. Money. Awesome. Money. <laughs> so we'll that. get to Work Llama in a second. A lot of our listeners sure. don't know who you are. Give us a little bit about you from a personal angle. What do you like? Sports, family, walks on the beach? Uh, walks with the dog. That's, that's Love it. Yeah. yeah. Walks yeah. with the dog. What kind of dog? One dog? Got yeah. a, I've got a six-year-old white golden. The golden oh. Retriever. Yeah. His name Golds is are awesome. Truffle. Truffle Valentino. Truffle. Truffle Valentino. That's cute. Yeah. That's a good name. Yeah. And we'll get to the company name in a second. Not so exciting. <laughs> uh, also, a lot of our listeners won't know Work Llama. Give us the elevator pitch on the you, company I'll and what you, you do. You. I'll give you that in a second. So we are a unified AI uh, platform for everything talent. So at the core of Work Llama is a, is a talent marketing, talent engagement, ATS, as well as a high volume recruiting engine. So that's what we do. Uh, we focus heavily on contingent uh, as well as direct sourcing, and we're also beginning to play in the enterprise space more and more. Okay. That's a lot, man. Yeah. That's a lot. It's a lot. That's a pretty, that's a pretty wide tam. It, I mean, that's, that's llamas can bite a lot ooh. at a time, apparently. apparently. <laughs> they, they've bitten off a lot. They carry so they a lot of weight, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You, got, you got the AI, which means you've got to have some type of conversational AI. That's we there, do, yeah. Is, what, what's the what's the llama the llama name? Because you got to have a little llama head, right? So, like, I didn't come up with the name. But okay. Who already did, did a fantastic excuses. job? Don't make excuses. <laughs> we'll talk about Tina in a second, but yeah, uh, they, the llama. The idea behind the llama is that. They do the heavy lifting for you. Okay. And uh, that was that was what we wanted to be for our customers is we do the heavy lifting for them. And uh, we were talent focused. Right? We've always been about talent. We want to make sure we take everything away from the talent, make it as easy as for them in their career journey. Right. That's been our vision for them is to find what they enjoy the most. Yep. And uh, you know use the best of technology available for us to make it as exciting and easy for them to find what they need. So you're head of product. Uh, the generative AI revolution yeah. is in full swing. It's here, kids. Talk about it's the here. last last 12, 18 months in your business and how things have changed. Your perspective has maybe altered due to the generative AI and, and what's out there now. How is that impacting sure, products? Sure. So we take a slightly contrarian position there. Um, obviously, AI is here to stay. No one's debating that. Uh, AI is doing a fantastic job with what it's doing right now, but mm. what we're seeing in the industry is a lot of like grammarly type work. Like I'll, I'll, we can write job descriptions for you. We can we can write emails for you, oh, and yeah. and we were trying we're trying very very intentionally not to jump on that bandwagon. Um, our AI in the past has always been very very intentional. Uh-huh. Um, so we're trying not to just have anything in there that calls it AI. Right. So what we're trying to do is bring in a lot of what we call contextual knowledge that we know about of our talent and our customers to then use Gen AI or the best of technologies out there to make it more contextual and useful, right? So um, obviously, you know, there are parts of it where our competitors continue to go on with, with a lot of AI powered solutions. And oh, yeah. yeah, we want to make sure we're not lagging, but we also want to make sure we're not another copycat of what a co-pilot is. We're trying to be very intentional in what we put out in the market. Well, being intentional in your space, right? Yes, I mean, the, like Microsoft Copilot is very broad. Yeah, it does a lot of things, but it's very, very, say it's it's very wide, but it's very shallow. Yeah, right at this point, um, where you guys, and that's just for the data that it has available mm-hmm. to be able mm-hmm. to train off of, right? Yeah. Um, you guys, though, more specific, right? More workforce, workforce data. So, I mean, how how quickly do you think that more of the focused um, domain specific players are going to be able to get this AI piece right because they're not looking at broad tranches of, of, of data, right? Yeah. They're looking at very small and focused. Although, 
you know, ones that, that could definitely help from a process methodology, from a matching, those types of things. But what do you think about the space and the actual domain players? Will they get this right faster than the, than the, the, than the broad-based? No, for sure. I think what, it's already happening, right? It's not, it's not that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a breakthrough technology that will come two years from now. It's already happening, right? Uh -huh. what, what technology providers in the HR space have always had is the data that a typical, like, a, like an LLM, might not have a, a, been able to train on, right? Right, right. So we've had the data for a while. What I think it will change drastically is now the interface. Okay. Um, it's no longer going to be just a, a search and filtering. It's no longer just going to be, I'm going to give you um, a click, click, click to get to what you need to be. Right. It's going to be more conversational. It's going to be more, I'm looking for this, can we do this, and then further just kind of go through that process of asking the right questions to what you need to do. Right. So which is good which engagement. Is, exactly. Is which is for. where I think okay. the differentiation will come from okay. with, with what we're seeing in the which, AI space. Which, which, which makes sense, which yeah. we've seen a lot of companies yeah. do. Yeah. So the llama carries a lot of weight and you guys provide a lot of services. I'm looking here at marketing, scheduling, engagement, et yeah. cetera. Talk to me about the competitive landscape. You're in a lot of people's pie, if you will. <laughs> How do you look diagrams. at the competitive yeah landscape there, Mr. Lama? So here's how we've always taken this, right? And and this is just coming from me as a product person is um, work on what your customers and your users want, and then you, you'll have a product that's better than competition, right? So we've, we've tried to take that position where we're not n intentionally looking at competition to see what they're doing and what can we do to be as powerful as competitive. Yeah. Um, it's always been what is our customer looking for and built for them. And, and to your point, what that's done is we've been able to achieve a suite of products that are able to replace a lot of point solutions for our customers. So uh, rather than a customer saying, and, and, and this is an interesting word that I heard a lot, it's called orchestration. Uh, if you've been in the sessions, you hear orchestration a lot. And what that is, is it's actually telling me that our customers are going to have to figure out how to use product A for telemarketing, product B for ATS, product C for scheduling, and then orchestrate what they need out of them. And, and for us, it's always being, I call it the integration nightmare. I call it, okay, uh, orchestration is just a fancy way of saying it's going to be a hard way to get to what you need to so do. You're talking about all these different point solutions and then trying to integrate and then orchestrate the, the process methodology. Is to, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now that sounds like a bitch. Yeah, and for us it's always been one platform, one solution. No. We'll, we'll get you to what we need. And, and yeah, the, the approach we've taken to the market is you know, customer first, so we always work with our customers. We partner with them very, very Everybody heavily on, does that. on the roadmap. Let's talk about the right. stuff that you guys do different. Okay? Everybody <laughs> talks about that. Let's get out, let's get out of the, the, the talking points here. Okay? Yeah. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about the really cool shit that you guys are doing. And talk about how you're, in, from our understanding, you're partnering with Daxtra. That's right. That's how right. Does, how does that actually work? So, you know, obviously, I, you know, Daxtra has been a phenomenal leader from yeah. an AI search and match standpoint, yeah, yeah. right? So, what we've done very, very, again, again, I, I want to be very intentional here. It's not. Yeah. It's, it's what Daxtra does. It fit really, really well in our ecosystem, right? So, our users don't have to leave the ATS, right? right. Daxtra it's white labeled right into the system. That's right. It's fully embedded. Yeah. Uh, it makes the ATS more productive, yeah. right? And Daxter yeah. does a phenomenal job of getting the candidate data, parsing, indexing, and provide a unified search experience, right? Uh -huh. So for us, it's leveraging Daxter's AI capabilities on top of what we already have gotcha. to provide this rich search interfaces for our customers where they, they run the search within Daxter. Okay. Uh, and, and then they leverage everything that WorkLama does, like our talent pooling capabilities, uh -huh. our shortlisting capabilities, our automation communication capabilities, but they sit right in the middle of it, which I think makes the, the integration with Daxter very, very powerful for Okay, us. I mean, because it, technologies like Daxter really do, they, they do the heavy lifting. Yeah. To be able to parse, to be able to contextualize, and then to be able to prospectively, you know, be that that search infrastructure mm -hmm. or matching mm -hmm. infrastructure. Is that how you guys are using them, kind of like in totality? Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. Okay. And Daxter also searches local databases, which is uh, great for yes. our, our customers. Yes. Uh, and then also goes out to like the LinkedIn and the monsters, and they're able to provide kind of a unified way of saying, hey, here's your top 10 talent, doesn't matter where they're coming from, gotcha. which is great. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, back to carrying a lot of weight. Yeah. Because I'm a guy who knows about carrying a lot of weight. <laughs> you guys raised 50 million big ones Say last year. What? Yeah, 50 million big ones. Uh, you're at 139 employees, according to LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, based in Georgia. That's yes. just a side note. Where there are a lot Georgia? of Georgia. Alpharetta. Atlanta. Alpharetta. Alpharetta. Yeah. Alpharetta, yeah. So the $50 million, talk about the future. 
what's the money going to be used for? I assume new products, features are coming out. We've talked about the past, the present. Let's talk about the future. I mean, it's all going in my pocket, man. It's my, my paycheck. Yeah. Hello. No <laughs> Drinks on Sugu. Let's go. Yeah, we've we've uh, <clears throat> we've focused a lot of that fifty million dollars in growth and expansion. Uh, from an R and D standpoint, partnership and partnership integrations is a big part of where that's going. Okay. Um, and um, AI research. We're building a lot of our internal AI teams to build um, some of this out. So that's, that's another big area where that investment's going. And, and obviously the last part is uh, acquisition. Um, we're, oh, we're, the big A word, acquisitions. Dig into that one. What are you looking we're, for? We're, what are, where are we, what are we shopping for? Sugar's going shopping. <laughs> what are we shopping for? Come on, let's, let's talk about yeah, this. Yeah, if you're in the market for a direct sourcing platform, yeah, we're yeah. here. We're in the market for an ATS, we're here. Uh -huh. In the market for talent marketing, talent engagement, we're here. Ah, gotcha. So we got you any ways you want, four ways, one way. We got it. <laughs> That is Sugu Donna Karen. I mean Dina Karen. There you and go. For our listeners who want to know more about Work Llama, where would you send them? Uh, go to worklama.com uh, or check us out on LinkedIn for more. Or we've got a nice booth here at Unleash. Go find us right yeah. there. Eat your food, Tina. That's right. We got to go feed <laughs> Tina. Free, free llamas. Swing that by the booth. It. Live from the Daxter booth at Unleash in Las Vegas. We, we out. out.